Welcome to Physics Hub. Today is 30th of June 2019 Sunday and here I am with a new set video. So as you know that on every Sunday we upload a set video on our YouTube channel which consists of 10 solved problems from different topics of physics. We generally upload the question paper on our Facebook page little earlier so that you can try to solve the questions and match your answers whenever the solutions are uploaded. Now one thing, whenever we upload a video, we distribute it into different relatable playlists. So go through the playlist to get your desired video and keep a track on our community post as well. It will help you to make your base of physics strong. Now without wasting much time, let's start today's set video. So this is set 38 and this set contains questions from special theory of relativity. The first question reads, in a system of units in which the velocity of light c equals to 1, which of the following is a Lorentz transformation? So how to solve this question? So we know this uh, Lorentz transformation formula, x prime equal to gamma into x minus bt and a prime equals to this. Now what is given to us? c equals to 1. This information is given to us. So we are writing this x prime and t prime uh, uh, and this gamma x minus gamma bt and gamma t minus gamma into x into g because c is 1 so gamma into x into g and we are writing in terms of matrix and here the answer lies. So we are seeing that in the expressions of x prime and t prime the coefficient of x and t are getting interchanged. Can you see it? Here x was there, here t is there. Here q was there, here x is there. So basically they are getting exchange or interchange. So coefficient of x and t get interchange when we choose c equals to 1. Now look at the options. Only in option d we see that uh, <coughs> the coefficient of x and t has got interchange. So option d is the correct option. Moving to the next question, question number 2. A permission at rest decays into two photons which move along the x axis. They are both detected simultaneously after a time t equals to 10 seconds. In an inertial frame moving with a velocity v equals to 0.6 c in the direction of one of the photons, the time interval between the two detection is. Okay, so this is your pion which is decaying into two photons, uh, two detectors are employed here and here. So let's take this middle position as x equal to 0, then uh, this position x1 equals to 10 c and this position x2 equal to uh, minus 10 c. So the total uh, distance between these two events is 20 c and they are detected simultaneously so delta t equals to 0. Now we have to find out the time interval in the unprimed frame, sorry prime frame. So the form we are using the formula gamma into delta t minus v by c square delta x. So delta t is 0 so delta t prime will become minus 15. How? Because gamma is 1 by 1 minus root over 1 minus v square by c square here it is given 0.6 c v by c. v is 0.6 c so we just utilize here and we got it minus 50 now time interval it cannot be negative so we have to take the positive value so it's 15 second and it is matching with option a option a is the correct option moving to the third question in a futuristic scenario two space ships a and B are running a race where they start from the same point mark start here but fly in opposite direction at a constant speed close to the speed of light means you have to consider relativistically an observer fixed at the starting point observes that they both cross the points and marked end which are equidistant from the starting point at the same time afterwards the, this observer receives message from both the spaceship A and B which of the following could be true ok so the observer in the laboratory frame will see that the dilated time for both A e and B uh, cross the crossing the end mark is equal but the proper time measured by the spaces A and B will be less than the dilated time because proper time is always less than the dilated time so both of them will think that they have won the race because their clock says that if they have crossed the end mark in less time so both of them will uh, consider that they have won the race. So option A is the correct option. Moving to the next question, question number 4, light takes approximately 8 minutes to travel from the sun to the earth. Suppose in the frame of sun, the event, an event occurs at t equals to 0 at the sun and another event occurs on earth at t equals to 1 minute. 
the velocity of the in inertial frame in which both of these events are simultaneous is okay so we are considering it from with respect to the reference frame of sun and this observer is moving with velocity c by 8 so delta t is 60 second delta x is uh, 48 480 c it takes 8 minutes to travel from sun to the earth so basically we are taking sun as the observer frame or the uh, unprime frame so delta t prime is look the velocity of the inertial frame in which both of these events are simultaneous means the prime frame is this frame okay this so delta t prime is simultaneous means zero and putting that we get uh, v equals to c by 8 so c by 8 is the answer so the velocity of the inertial frame in which both of these <coughs> events are simultaneous is c by 8 and the direction uh, should be from sun to earth okay so option b is the correct option moving to the next question question number five for the set of all lorentz transformation with the velocities along the x-axis consider the two statements given below if l is a lorentz transformation then l inverse is also a lorentz transformation if L1 and L2 are Lorentz transformation, then L1 and L2 is necessarily a Lorentz transformation. So both the informations are correct. If you take uh, one uh, Lorentz transformation and you take inverse, you will see that uh, <coughs> the inverse will also be a Lorentz transformation. And if you take two Lorentz transformation and multiply them, then you will find that uh, the multiplication is also a Lorentz transformation. Even check uh, taking some examples. Question number 6, an electron is moving with a velocity of 0.85 c in the same direction as that of a moving photon. The relative velocity of the electron with respect to photon is, okay, so this is the scenario, so v is given to be 0.85 c. Now we have to uh, utilize the relative velocity formula here, ux equal to ux prime plus v divided by 1 plus ux prime into v by c square. Here ux prime equal to minus c. As we are considering it from the uh, frame of gamma, so it will see that uh, this electron is moving in the opposite direction with the velocity of minus, uh, c. So, x prime equal to minus c. <coughs> Why it is so? Because the frame is itself moving with the velocity of c. So, uh, now you know that the velocity cannot be greater than the velocity of light. So, it is minus c. And if we put that uh, value of ux prime here in this expression, you get it in ux equal to minus c. So it is matching with option b. Option b is the correct option. Next, a question uh, 7. In the laboratory frame, two observers c and b are moving along the sides of a nuclear tri triangle with equal speed c by 2 as shown in the figure. The speed of b as measured by a will be. Okay. Take b as s frame and uh, a, this point a as s prime frame so u b y y yth component look so first we have to understand how we are setting the coordinate system so look we uh, this a is moving in this direction so we are familiar with uh, taking this direction means the moving direction at x direction so we are taking x direction and our uh, we are setting the coordinate system accordingly so this is the x direction this is means this is the i cap direction and the so means the perpendicular direction will be uh, j cap direction okay and accordingly we are uh, have calculated the angles so u b y y is component of this velocity this is the vector and the y -th component means uh, this so this is c by 2 cos 30 and the uh, x component is uh, c by 2 sin 60 or uh, minus c by 2 uh, sin 30 or you can uh, alternatively write minus c by 2 cos 60 and it is uh, this component is ux and this component is ui minus sign is here because it is uh, in the negative direction ux prime now we have to find out the velocity in with respect to a so we have to find out ux prime and ui prime using our conventional relative uh, velocity determination formula ux prime equal to ux minus b divided by 1 minus ux b by c square ui prime equals to ui divided by gamma into 1 minus ux b by c square and um, all the values are given and uh, ux ui should be taken from here 
and we find that uh, x prime equals to this two third c and u i prime equals to one third c. Now u x prime and u i prime means the components of u x and u i are known. Therefore, the speed of b measured by a will be b b a velocity of b with respect to a equals root over of u x prime plus u i prime square. You know this formula because uh, this is how we find the mod value of a vector, and we are getting it uh, root over 5 by 3 c, and it is matching with option D. Option D is the correct option. Moving to the next question, question number eight: A beam of light propagates in a slab of glass Refra of refractive index n in the positive x direction. The slab itself is also moving in the positive direction with the speed v in laboratory frame. What is the speed of beam of light as measured in the laboratory frame? So this is a scenario. This is suppose the glass slab is the s prime frame and this is the s prime s frame and it is uh, the prime frame is moving with velocity v. Now we know that the velocity of light inside some refractive inside some medium of refractive index mu is uh, c prime. It no longer remains c. It becomes c prime, which is equals to c by uh, the refractive index of that medium mu. Here, refractive index is given to be n, so um, u x prime equals to c by n. So, this is the velocity of light with respect to this uh, prime frame. So, we have to find out that this velocity of light with respect to this unprime frame. So, u x equal to u x prime plus v divided by 1 plus u x prime v. This formula is very, very important. In many questions, you have to use this formula. Okay, so u x prime and v, v, v we are given. V is V, and U X prime we have found C by M, and we after doing some calculation we will get C square plus V C N by C N plus V, and it is matching with option D. If you want to simplify it more, you can do it uh, using binomial expansion. But for uh, as far as this question is, question is concerned, we don't need to do further calculation because this is uh, matching with one of the options. So this option is correct option. Moving to question number 9, two identical lamp, lamps of clay each of having mass m collide head on with speed 2, 3 by 2 c and stick together. What will be the mass of the composite lamp? So, this is the scenario. This mass is coming with velocity there, root 3 by 2 c. This mass is also coming with the same velocity. Uh, they collide, stick together, and we have to find out the lamp of the next mass. Suppose this is m. So conservation of momentum says, look, they are coming from with the uh, same velocity from the opposite direction. So the momentum is zero, total momentum is zero. So conservation of momentum says the particle will be at rest after collision because uh, uh, unless and until it is at rest, the momentum will not be zero. From conservation of energy, you can write twice m gamma naught c square total energy of the two photons equal to the rest mass energy of the uh, composite lamp. Now it is basically easy to find out the velocity. So we put gamma equals root to one by one minus one by root over one minus b square by c square. And doing some easy calculation, we found that m equals to four m naught. Here it is matching with option b. So option b is the correct option. Moving to the last question of this set. Question number 10, consider the decay process tau to pi 1 plus tau neutrino in the rest frame of tau. The masses of tau and pi 1 and tau neutrino are uh, m tau, m pi and 0 respectively, the energy of pi 1 is. Okay, so this is the <coughs> decay process. Now applying uh, conservation of linear momentum, this was at rest, so 0 equals to p mu plus p nu. So P mu equals to P nu equals to P. We are taking mod value because the minus sign will appear if we take this to this side. Now apply uh, conservation of energy. Then E tau equals to E pi plus E nu. So M tau C square equals to E pi plus E nu. And E pi square equals to we use the formula P square C square plus M naught square C to the power 4. Similarly for E nu, we are writing this. But M nu is 0. It is given. Neutron is massless. So we are subtracting this equation from this and we are getting this. Okay. Now we are deriving an equation involving e pi and e nu. So e pi minus e nu equals to this. This is one equation and this is another equation e pi plus e nu. So we have got two, two equations and two, un two unknowns. So we can easily find out the 
unknown. So adding these two equations 1 and 2 we get uh, twice e pi goes to this. So e pi goes to this by twice m tau. So m tau square plus m pi square into uh, c square divided by twice m tau and it is matching with option B. So option B is the correct option. And this is the end. So this is all for today guys. If you have any confusion, query or questions, you can comment down below. I will try my best to answer them all. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are any visitor of this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And finally, thanks for watching.